You are listening to Ace Comicals. My name's Greg. Today I'm joined by my co-host Leon. Let's get started. Welcome to Ace Comicals episode 3. Today I'm joined by Leon and not Rahul because he's currently holidaying in Japan. This is the first of what we've dubbed as the talky episodes where we will discuss freely our current reads, new discoveries and general thoughts and feelings regarding the uh, regarding the medium. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So Leon, how have you been? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Um... Just been a normal week, you know, a lot of work, looking forward to the weekend, but um, still found some time to, uh, to read some comics. Missing Rahul. <laughs> Hope he's having a good time uh, over there in Japan. We, we miss him terribly. We miss him terribly. <laughs> His little face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's having a great time. We, we shouldn't have any any uh, sympathy we should we should just be just pure jealousy that's what it should be (laughs) yeah he's (laughs) living it up i can't remember exactly where he is in japan right now of time recording but whatever he's doing he's he's having a great time he keeps keeps sending us photos of food and stuff like that that he's enjoying out there and it's just yeah we should put him on a first strike for that yeah exactly (laughs) i'm sitting there at work and then i get this like ping on my phone and i look and it's just rahul's you know hey guys check out today's dinner (laughs) you know and then I, I look at my meagre rations that I brought to work with me. Usually I take cereal, so I've got like a bowl of shreddies and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> well, it's me with my tuna sandwich. <laughs> He's living it up in a restaurant. Yeah. Anyways, um, so what, what, I mean, like you said you had some time to read some comics this week. So what kind of stuff have you been plying through? Well, like... Um... Like I've been trying to like keep um, keep recent, so I thought I tried being recent enough. But yeah, the the two things that I've been reading they they're still they're still going on, but uh, they started a lot earlier than I thought. So um, uh, back in January, way way back in January, um, Humble Bundle were doing one of their book bundles, right. uh, which are pretty good, and yep. they've done a, they've done a couple image ones in the past, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, they were doing one in honor of it being 25 years of Image Comics, so they started in '92, and uh, that's the uh, creator-owned uh, comic book uh, publishing house, I should say, uh, where a lot of um, well, is this the one where a bunch of people who have formerly been writing for uh, Marvel and DC had gone over? Not like um, the there's an, there's another uh, similar Are you comics one of Vertigo maybe no, there, no, there's no a, Vertigo there's another... was the violent side that went to, yeah that then became part yeah. of DC yeah it, that's thing there's another there's another one but it's not Image uh, who also was a lot of creators who left and started their own house but um, Image was one that had had a, had a bunch of them um, so it, to uh, celebrate the 25th anniversary there was a massive bundle and um, I just couldn't say no. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like there were so many books on offer. Some I already yeah. own, um, but I thought, oh, double up, uh, not too bad. I don't don't mind that. There's a lot of um, interesting and diverse mm. looking covers, uh, and lots of different titles that I've um, heard before or not read, but bought for people as um, as gifts. So yeah, I put my money down. Um, can't remember what I did with the. Uh, I I usually tweak the bottom bit in a humble bundle to choose where the money goes a bit yeah so i can't remember what i did but I, yeah i did my little normal tweak um and out of those i was looking through and i thought oh what should what should i like pick i want to do something um just something fresh not go for normal normal leon uh comics so um one of the covers i came across uh, was a bunch of uh, high school kids and like like confession time here yeah. yeah yeah you know me like i <laughs> Not even guilty pleasure, but I I, I love my teenage drums. I he, love my teenage drums. See, see, he call, like, Leon calls it a guilty pleasure, but it's not. It's just so well documented. <laughs> it really is. Like, uh, like obviously, we've got that. Uh, recently, we've got the um, Riverdale uh, show, which is based off Archie comics. But yeah. it's like a dark, sexy teenage take. Like, 
and man, I was looking forward to that. I've been waiting for that show, watched the first couple of episodes, and I'm in. I'm in. So, like, I see this cover, and I think, like, I, I don't care what the storyline is. Yeah. I'm, I just see all these, like, this diverse, uh, multiracial cast of uh, school kids. And when I say diverse, I mean hair color as well. You've got the blonde, you've got the brunette. And I thought, like, yeah, I'm in. I'm into this. I, I don't know what. I, I hadn't heard anything about it. Just knew it was set in this prep school. Mm. Um, and, yeah, dived in. And, man, uh, that is not Gossip Girl the comic. <laughs> like, um, immediately. I kind of wished um, the CW would do a show like this. Like, immediately, before we've even met the main characters, and I'm not going to go into too many details with this. Um, I read the first um, four issues as part of the first trade. Um, yeah. Yeah, but immediately jumping in, you've got this story, which I guess is set just before, and it's uh, this, like, escape plot out of the school, and these two students trying to, like, escape. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, like, it's quite brutal straight away. And, like, the whole, uh, any, like, mystery element of, like, what uh, side the sort of the faculty are on, that, that that's not a thing. Like, they're evil. There's, that's basically on the cover. They are evil. But uh, I guess the questions <clears throat> are what are their purposes and why they've picked each person one one question about this um do you think sabrina will ever turn up in this show as what you mean yes sabrina the teenage witch because she was she was an archie character and she turned up well um from what the guy who's the head of archie comics but also the um showrunner of the tv show uh i think they had the tcas in january which is where a couple of networks execs uh, go in front of the press and they start talking about their, their new slate of shows for the year. And there's one that happens in the summer as well. But at the winter ones, they did mention that they, they're hoping to create like a universe. So they, I think what we'll, they'll probably do is Sabrina will appear, but it'll be a backdoor pilot to her own show. Yeah, we... I, I think, yeah. I don't know how magic is going to work in that world, but I, I think I think that is, yeah. um, we... I, think that, I think that's the intent. Are we going to get a super moody like you know the movie the coven are we gonna i would we, kill for that are we gonna get that but sabrina the teenage witch because that would be amazing coven the tv show yeah i'd, I'd love that <laughs> i'd definitely be down for that like yeah. I, I would hadn't even thought of it that way i yeah. was thinking of it as being like um i don't know beverly hills 90210 magic but yeah no now you put the coven i'm in I am in for because that. the way you've described the show to me, I think that would be the fit. And with like this recent resurgence, with like the whole like you know late eighties nineties aesthetic thing, you see people dressing that way, and you get a lot of music that kind of takes influences from back then now coming mm. back up to the forefront. Um, and you kind of see it a little bit in comics, maybe. I guess they. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, with, with, I mean, with this comic, Morning Glory. It's, um... It is very self-aware on the whole school thing. It isn't too cute, but what you get, yeah. I mean, you're, when you're introduced to the characters of this book, you've got the uh, blonde super student who's ostensibly the main character. She's, like, really smart, mm. and, like, hot and blah, blah, blah. But uh, you've got the uh, uh, Asian mysterious guy who who can do martial arts for some reason, but I won't judge it until, like, I read a bit further and see what their point is. But, yeah, you've got him who we don't really know why he's there. We've got um, the uh, rich, uh, possibly British douche. I've been reading him as a British guy, but he's like this rich kid who's been kicked out of all these schools. And it's like, when you first meet him, he's having a conversation with his mum. And like, she's just rattling off. Like, the, it's a bunch of panels of them sitting, eating like breakfast or whatever. Uh, and their butler's just standing there in the middle. And she's like reeling off all these things that he did. And she's asking, how did you get into this academy? Um because they've all been accepted, all these, these characters, um, and it's the day before. And so, how did you get in like, when you get, got kicked out of X, Y, Z, and you did this? And and it, that, the stuff that she lists is so dark, like straight off the bat. And then one of the questions she even asks is, uh, it's like, because his dad's dead, and she's like, did you kill your dad? Like, it's just off the cuff. Yeah. And But the thing, that's not even what she's angry about. She's angry like, that she uh, she's banned from Martha's Vineyard because of him. <laughs> so it's like, you get these like cool introductions. You get like, there's an Indian girl who like, her panel's just her saying goodbye to like, the, uh, these guys who are boyfriends, at, but like in different times. So it's like saying, oh, I'm going to miss you. Don't don't forget about me. Don't date anybody else. And then she does it again. Then she does it again and then jumps in a cab with loads of presents. And then you've got, 
the everyman redhead boy, who I think is sort of the other meant to be the other main character, uh, and he's he's a character who seems like he's got a bad relationship with his dad. His dad doesn't care when he's leaving and all that. And then you've got um, emo redhead girl. I'm calling them all these because I can't remember their names, but uh, these descriptions are way better. But like yeah. you got the emo redhead girl yeah. who she's introduced. She's from. Oh, is it? she's from some mid-state area, and her like dad and brother like run a farm, and uh, yeah. their commentary, like the panels, go back and forth between us seeing pages from her diary mm. and them commenting on it, and they've just accepted that she's like really, really goth and dark, and they're <laughs> like, "Oh, we're happy for her at this school. Hopefully, she can get out more and do more stuff." And it's like, "Yeah, we're just not uh, capable of uh, of taking care of her." Go to this school but- and be less weird. Yeah, but it's funny because they've all been accepted into this like <clears throat> yeah. prestigious prep school, and it's like, oh, it's the place you want to go if you want to go to an Ivy League school. So they're all like uh, super hyped for it, and they get there, and things are like really weird. Like you got this, um, they've, they've been shown this video, this uh, instruction video of like, uh, well, introduction video. But yeah. It's like in between the frames, uh, there's like weird stuff like sacrificing of a goat or something, and like uh, this is issue one, and uh, and then someone's like, did I just see? But it's all like played over, and the tone of this is really weird because it does towards the end of the first issue. Uh, no spoilers. Uh, things get really weird, and um, it's no longer oh, this is a, a high school show, but uh, as a, as a comic book, no, this is a crazy sci-fi show with lots of crazy stuff happening, and um, like it, in ways, it reminds me of a bit of a uh, Kingsman, yeah. the uh, the film, like where like um, when they they go to all these top students go to the school to be trained to be like uh, top secret agents. Yeah. It kind of has that framing, but the uh, people training them are way uh, training. I should say in inverted commas are way more antagonistic. And it seems like there's a way darker premise. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's very, very weird. Cause the, the tone is like weird. Like sometimes it, it feels like it's being like uh, self serious, not really self serious, but like that there's a, a, a plot in terms of um, like er, everything. I guess yeah. self serious is, is right. Like um, like it's taken itself at face value. But then other times it dips into like crazy town where it just yeah. and everyone is very matter of fact and just accepts all these crazy things are happening. People are like dying or like really odd stuff is happening. And people are just like, well, that's weird something's not right about this like it's really odd but I, i'm not sure if that's purposeful but if it is it, it is interesting to read mm. and like i've seen it described uh, like reading up about it since reading it it's like around the time i think in the run-up people were describing it as runaways meets lost yeah like you know me i'm a massive lost apologist like I, i've not got time for your lost negativity <laughs> i mean Dupree, last season has some issues but i think yeah i think, I think it's a great show but I think what this shares, if anything, we've lost, yeah. is the feeling that some of the mysteries are just being pulled out of their butts and like yeah. they're just like throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Mm. But um, I mean, despite that, it's an enjoyable read. I think uh, Nick Spencer's writing is like punchy and interesting, and uh, um, um, it's, it's hooked me to see like where the mystery's going. At least to read in, in the next couple of trades. Um, Joe uh, Eisman's art is pretty good. It's very um, uh, no. It's, it's always a cliche to go. It's expressive, it's expressive, but it is. I mean, drawn a range of uh, different characters in, in like different perilous situations, and yeah, it's, it's all very cool. I mean, like the design of the school, uh, which is this like the academy is this massive, massive uh, building that looks really prestigious, um, and like all, there's lots of like knowing evil glares from like different teacher characters and that's that's done really well and like um the colors are very uh very bright very um very lively and those are done by uh robin esquejo um, mm. butchering but um yeah i mean based on what i've read so far in the first trade i would recommend it i mean i, I don't know where the mystery's going i don't know if it's gonna crap the bed straight away but if it doesn't it could be a good read, and yeah. uh, I'm a massive Runaways fan. Yeah, uh, but I think I think that connection is very, uh, very uh, materialistic, quite fake. Like I don't, yeah. it's more than that. There's something else deeper and darker going on. Right. So I'm interested to see um, where that one goes. See, 
my reading habits in no way reflect my watching habits because <laughs> at the moment I'm not watching a lot of TV. I'm eagerly awaiting the Iron Fist series because mm. I want to get on that when that starts on Netflix. It's yeah, that's that's sort of soon. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. I'm I'm really really like getting amped for that because that that is going to be soon. Actually, it's, it's imminent. So um, I'm really really hyped for that, and I've been. I, I think that one's going to be the. Um... The real test, you reckon? Because I think I think yeah. the first test was actually I think they've all been tests, but in different ways. Because like Daredevil was like, can Marvel work on TV and not be Agents of Shield? Yeah. And can they allow? Can they do a darker show that people will still ex- um, enjoy as being part of the MCU? And they proved that. Yes. yes. Okay. Can we do a show that is a superhero show, but not really? It's about dealing with abuse and with Jessica Jones, and and they they did that. Uh, and it's like, okay, can we do? a black exploitation uh superhero show but modernize it and have it so like 90 percent of the cast are black but it's not really um it doesn't feel like it's any type of like uh statement or whatever yeah uh, and and um they did that as well so with this one this is the trickier one because it's like uh can they do this show about this uh yeah white dude who gets kung fu powers but I think they'll be able to pull it off. See, it has a real danger of coming across like one of those, what I call them, tacky special effects filled shows that mm-hmm. you see a lot of. You know, like these like magical item shows and things. Yeah, I don't know. It it, it has it. I don't know how best to describe these shows, but they're like these tacky fantasy sci fi shows that seem to pop up all the time. Ones with like no budget, but yeah. they're, they, they're yeah. still still trying to pull stuff off. Yeah, and and it has this real danger of turning into that. But you know, it's got back in because the others have had back in, and it's on Netflix, yeah. and it's their it's their baby. This Marvel shit is their baby at the moment. Yeah, and, so, and this is going to be the show that leads directly into Defenders, which is yeah. their uh, their big culmination point for this. So I guess it's the end of what you could call the MCU TV phase yeah. one. So it's really important. And I'm I'm hoping it doesn't fall short, but well, from the well, looks, you know of, this... well, it looks so far, it looks real good so far. Well, it you doesn't... know what it needs, what it needs, because the trailers yeah. I've I've only watched the one of them, and it was all right. It, it doesn't really, I don't really know it, its character, and I guess that's because maybe I'm least exposed to Iron Fist as well. But mm. um, what it needs is like Daredevil, that has really good action. Yeah, uh, and what I noticed, even though I really like. Uh, I like that. I like Jessica Jones and Luke Cage more in different ways. Like I like each of them for different reasons, but like the action in Jessica Jones really let me down. And then the action in Luke Cage got was a bit better, but it it didn't achieve what Daredevil was achieving. Daredevil, so I'm yeah. I'm hoping that with this being kung fu, that they um they go back to those Daredevil mm. levels of really good choreographed See, action. See, Daredevil was action. Jessica Jones for me was psychological, it's kind of like a thriller type thing, more than mm. a, more than an action thing. But they did... still tried to have these poorly shot fights from time to time. Yeah, I didn't think it was all terrible. The bar fight was cool. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. There was a there was a sick bar fight in there. I have to say that. And like Luke Cage rushing down. Um, yeah. The uh, the central house in um, the place where they were storing all the stuff. Yeah. That was cool action. Yeah. The other scenes were shot. Just not imaginative at all. No, but we'll see. I it's think this one has potential. By, by far the most intellectual of the three. It's got the biggest. <laughs> it's it's the one that can surprise me the most because I yeah. was hoping for good things but, with but, the other as well. Yeah. This one, I, I've got no idea. This, I, I mean, with 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 the history of the character, with him being like a, a you know a cash in on the whole kung fu, um, seventies kind of craze yeah this is the, the, the craze for martial arts in the 70s he was a cash in on the kung fu dollar i think but um it's and he's in he's in his own right a pretty cool character anyway if you've ever read any of like the older like iron fist comics or he's you know he's grown into a character in his own right he's not just mm. he's not just a, a, a shameless cash in anymore i mean i don't yeah. think he really was that shameless a cash in in the first place he was still a pretty you know well pretty well constructed character and each of these shows so far have been good at reinventing all of the characters Mm. even like uh the ancillary characters so like 
Kingpin and Punisher in Daredevil. Electra. Uh, yeah, Electra. Like everyone's been reinvented yeah. to be really cool. So yeah, I've got hope. I've got hope, and I'm you know this is this is why I've got such great hope for it because of because of the the quality that they've already pumped out with the previous three. Hmm. But um, yeah, I, I'm following on from that. I guess in the hype running up, I've picked up. Um, the Gendy Tartakovsky Cage comics. Oh yeah, uh, which started last year and ran up to well, um, I think they might have finished this month. Um, I'm not too sure when number four was, whether it was end of January or beginning of Feb. But so just I've, four. There's only four, yeah. Oh. And um, it ends after number four. It's a self-contained limited series, uh, drawn by Gendy Tartakovsky, um, and it's a throwback to the sort of 70s style Luke Cage comics. He's wearing the old 70s gear with the yellow shirt and the tiara. Um, it's um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like Tartakovsky's riff on the black exploitation genre. Yeah, because what is this like? Because and... so I'm, a, I'm a massive, you know me, I'm a massive uh, Tartakovsky fan. Yeah. Whether it be Dexter, Samurai Jack, or um, it's it's very Clone Wars. It's very Tartakovsky. Um, you know, you know, if you've it, it, it it's it is, I can it, it's like it, I can imagine it as a Tartakovsky cartoon when I'm reading it. Hmm. It's the kind of thing I can it, it it gives me the Cartoon Network goosebumps when I look at it. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. got it's got that magic about it that Tartakovsky brings to his his work. I mean, especially with the way, um, I mean his his art style is very expressive. It's very caricaturistic. Um, and I think the way he's done it, the way he's um, he's written this, it's it's like he's written it. Um, I don't know because without spoiling it, it's difficult because it's only four issues long, and without spoiling mm. it, it's difficult for me to give you a real gauge of what it's about. But, but I mean, it, yeah. broadly, I mean, how would you describe it broadly? With like. Not really any plot, but just in terms of... Broadly, he's taken Luke Cage and he's sort of placed him centre stage as a... Um, a you know, the, he's a he's a superhero and he's he's a real tough guy, you know. Mm. You don't mess with Luke Cage. <laughs> it's the way that they've played it out. And the way that the way that they've done it in this, the way that Tartakovsky's put it together. They've they've put they've they've tried to make him as somebody that you don't mess with. He's like, you know, He's the super. He's a superhero, but he's not your regular kind of superhero. Hmm. Um, and I, I think for me, I, I, you know, I really, really enjoyed this story, and I was bummed that it was only four issues long. But then um, I sort of stumbled across um, some stuff where people have got concerns with the art style, with the way that Tartakovsky has drawn Luke Cage uh, in some of the pages of the book. Um, people weren't too happy with that and they thought that it was uh, kind of racist uh, it brought it, it's you know kind of um, too much of a caricature yeah I yeah I mean uh, yeah. like shared some of the the art from it and um, yeah I, I can definitely see I mean I've not not read it yet myself but I can definitely see the uh, concerns I mean uh, some some of the images are very sort of like uh, stereotypical for um uh like that era and like where where it's set like i know it's just one of those things where i guess it it needs a, a sort of delicate hand but because of uh his sort of characteristic uh caricatured style of how how he does his art it's unfortunately with this character and this setting ended up with a lot of uh sort of negative illusions because he's, he he doesn't have a delicate way of drawing things. That's not Tartakovsky. He he'll take something and he exaggerates it to the point of ridiculousness. Like the way he draws facial expressions, for example. You know when you see strained facial expressions hmm. in some of his cartoons. And I can see actually looking back at it now, having looked at people's concerns, I can I can see where these concerns come from. I really can. And as much as I enjoyed this book. And as much as it was one of my choices, because I do think it's still a good book, I do I do think it, it's still you know a fun thing to read. If you're a Tartakovsky fan, it's still really cool to have. Um, 
but I can I can I can see why some people wouldn't be very happy with it and I can see myself that it's not it's maybe not for everyone and as a Tartakovsky fan I like it but in hindsight having read what I've now read and looked at what I've now looked at yeah I've got I, I can I can see it in another light and it's um I can see why it would raise concerns, but I, I still, mm. I still think it's worth a read. I honestly do. Well, that's the thing. Like, yeah. uh, I, I'm interested in, in giving it a read. Like I've said, I'm a big yeah. uh, Tartakovsky fan, um, and it's, it's something that I, uh, I've noticed uh, a lot with his uh, work. I mean, a couple of years ago, um, I rewatched all of Samurai Jack. Yeah, and even in that, um, there's some highly sort of um, stereotype caricatured uh, characters from all over uh, and I definitely uh, have seen it um, uh, within that there's some uncomfortable uh, like character design um, and sort of um, the voice actors and lines that they would get there's definitely things that I notice more on that rewatch than I noticed as a kid so I think it's something that is part of his style but um, it doesn't come off as being it's part, malicious, yeah. particularly. I mean, I can't speak yeah. to someone's uh, intent, but it didn't come off as being malicious. It just comes up as yeah. like rarely misjudged and a uh, a lack of understanding. Because yeah. uh, I mean, in lo- a lot of situations with, like this, um, it, this is where it's good to have um, so p- p- people of different experiences in a room. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because stuff that I would like have probably have got no idea, uh, and I could put it into like uh, a game or a story or something like that, and have no idea because my only connection to it has been uh, tertiary or from afar. And I'm like, this is fine. This is a good representation or whatever. Or this is fine. Like this isn't particularly negative. And I could talk to someone who is depicted, and then they could they could tell me and be like didn't you realize X, Y, Z? And I'd be like, oh, no, no. And that's why it's good to sort of yeah. have people of different walks Which in is, like in yeah. a room or around so you can just say, eh, it's a bit iffy. But like, yeah. like regardless of that, um, I'm happy to see some uh, Tartakovsky, uh, especially doing Luke Cage. And yeah. I guess I'll make the judgment myself i mean might talk about it on a future episode but yeah. Um, i don't yeah no definitely yeah, interested i don't i don't think it's malicious in any way like you mm. said i think i think it's just the fact it is just the way he takes he'll take something and he'll exaggerate it to the nth degree like i was saying before and that's probably not the right thing to do in this case but mm. you know it it's it's not a bad comic by any by any stretch and it's um even with its problems i you know, I, in knowing that it's not malicious, and in knowing, in knowing that it's not, I, I don't, you know, yeah, I, I still, th- I still think it's a great book, and it's, it, this is something that pretty much came to light almost right before we were recording this show. Basically, that I sort of stumbled across it when I was doing some like last minute research. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that. Looking back now, you know what? I kind of do get it. But yeah, mm-hmm. Greg, uh, yeah, read read uh, two comics this week. Yeah, and the second one. I would heavily recommend to you. Yep. Heavily recommend. Yeah. Uh, it, again, part of that bundle. Yep. This one wasn't as a random pick or based on its cover as much. I'd heard this mentioned as uh, East of West, uh, yeah. written by Jonathan Hickman, yep. art done by Nick Dragota, uh, Dragota, and the colours done by Frank Martin. Right. Um, <clears throat> I had heard it mentioned, and it was mentioned to me as being uh, like a uh, post-apocalyptic, uh, Western type, and I thought, okay, blah blah, and then I saw it come up as I was scrolling down my purchases because I, I, I believe I was given not just the first trade but the second trade as part of this as well. So it's tempting yeah. you in and luring. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll try that. And uh, as mentioned last week uh, when we did, or well, last week, last episode where we did our um, Black Panther, and I mentioned that uh, interview that we put in the show notes with. Uh, uh, Tanahasi Coates mm. at a DC comic shop. Yeah. Um, one of the things he mentions is uh, he's mentioning a bunch of comics saying um, how he can only do what he does. So he talks about the reason why Black Panther is the way it is, his run, 
is because he can only write what he knows and how he feels. He doesn't expect someone else to write from that experience. And one of the things he, he brings up, like um, a, uh, a comic that we might be uh, talking about in the future at some point, he brings up um, Power Man and Iron Fist and says, like, he loves the action in that and yeah. that he, he wouldn't be able to write that. And another one he brought up was East of West saying he doesn't understand what's going on in the book at times, but he loves what he's reading. So I thought, okay, so seeing that, had the connection, I thought, no, okay, let me dive in. Let me uh, give this a read. So, I mean, I won't go deep into the story, or I'll just say it's um, it's, a, it's a sort of, um, it's an alt history book, um, but it, it's set in what would be our future. But yeah, uh, essentially the American Civil War didn't end when it ended. Instead, it raged on for ages and uh, the Native American tribes got involved uh, and then a uh, sort of meteorite comet uh, crashes in a part of America um, during that battle, um, during that war, sorry. And all of the heads of the main tribes, who were seven, I say tribes, different the different forces, yeah. whether they be Union soldiers, Confederates or whatever, they uh, uh, reached an armistice uh, at, the, at the place where it hit because they believe it to be a sign of... Uh, something something uh, bigger than them, yeah, uh, yeah. like the end of the world or something. So they they they, they uh, stop. They stop their fighting. They have a truce, and uh, everyone goes their separate ways and has uh, their different chunks. So like um, the uh, the Chinese uh, characters, they are on the west coast. So like San Francisco is is in their, in their territory. Um, like. Uh, uh, New Orleans is um, that uh, has a monarchy in place, uh, and that's like um, uh, by like former, I guess, the descendants of of slaves after um, the Civil War who are now like kings there. And you have the yeah, you have these seven seven like uh, distinct uh, tribes, and uh, they there's this une- uneasy but like balance that's held. So like the the uh, I guess what would, would have been the Union, uh, the Northern Union. They uh, they now are in not the White House but the White Tower, and that's yeah. where the president sits. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite interesting in, in that. But like <laughs> immediately, one of the first things we see is um, this um, this cool gunslinger who we don't see his face for a while, but we see this cool gunslinger, and he's uh, he's like all pale. And when I say pale, I mean his clothes are pale as well. Uh, and following him are these two uh, Native American characters who are all all white, but like with cool sort of like designs on their face. Like the, the use of color and shadow is so good, and it's so mysterious. And you have this guy walking around, and he's really cool, but you don't really know much about him. At the same time, uh, we have we're at this like, I guess the American version of a Stonehenge, mm. <laughs> and like uh, this is big like. Uh, Flash, and then these like three out of these. There's four points on the ground, and out of three of them, crawl out these like deformed, sort of freakish children. Uh, and they look over at the, the fourth point, and they're like, "Huh, what's going on? Where is he?" And they uh, go over and realize that their fourth horseman hasn't come up. So immediately, we got the four horsemen reincarnated as kids. So that's one element. <laughs> we got this gunslinger guy, who I won't reveal blah blah but we've got this gunslinger guy who's antagonistic to them who's going around uh trying to find something uh these four horsemen seem to have their fingers in each pie and and we we later find out that um the several important people um so one guy was writing a writing something uh the head of a head of the one of the native american tribes uh was saying something it was recorded orally and uh, they both, when they finished writing their point, and one finished saying his point, they both died at the same time. Uh, and then someone brought together those messages, as well as a third person who died as well. And then it spe- it gives a message, which is the end, the end of the world. So, like you have this, and it's called the message, or that what oh, that message right. brought together is. Yeah. So you have this cool, crazy religious element to it as well. So you got, and then it's not just that you've got like this future, you've got this sort of like uh, political drama in terms of like game of Thrones esque, not quite battle of the throne, but like uh, these the, the sort of like the push and pull of uh, like the p- 
political uh, makeup of this world. Um, yeah, like I've read this first trade, and man, like it get it gets more crazy. Like, I'm avoiding like main plot points here, but like it gets crazier than that. But unlike Morning Glories, which I, as a negative, I was saying it feels like some of the ideas are just thrown at the wall, like. This is written in such a like poetic way at times, and the way characters speak, I hear their voice in my head. Yeah, Gunslinger has this cowboy voice to me. This um, uh, you've got this guy uh, who I assume he has to be British uh, because yeah, he he's got to be British, uh, and he's part of this magic order, and like so, there's like f- the Black Towers, which he he does, and I believe that that must be part of the the uh, one of those seven kingdoms must be like. You know King George and like his influence during the during the, the American or uh, Revolutionary War before. So you've got all these different elements. Yeah. So, like you have sci-fi, magic, western, uh, just all types of crazy stuff. Um, and I don't know. The best way I just describe it is insane. And I think you it was right up your alley because it has this. Um, there's a lot of like uh, sort of uh, gothic speak and like uh, like I was saying the, the mix is the, the combinations of like sci-fi um, and magic come together in a really interesting way and then you've got all these different uneasy alliances from these seven different nations who yeah. who seem to feel like a puppet government oh, in yeah. some way yeah uh, because of the four horsemen and it is so many people pushing and pulling. That like it could fall apart again, like Morning Glories with all the mysteries. This could fall apart, but I am definitely hooked, and I think this one is right up your alley. Like I would recommend you I think, give. I think I have to give it a read. read. You you had me sold at the Four Horsemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's just the very beginning. And I love like, um, I love the American West anyway. But, yeah, you know. But like, yeah. oh man, the the art, ah, oh, the art is really cool. Like. um like it, it jumps around location wise, so you're in bits where you are just in in the west, where these massive like uh, buffalo esque creatures are being hunted and are yeah. being eaten, and then the next minute you're in uh, the you know, in like what looks like San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge. It looks uh, more traditionally uh, Oriental design. Yeah. Um, and then you're you go to another bit which is like a canyon. Yeah. Uh, so it's like the Grand Canyon, but there's skyscrapers inside it. Mm. So, like, every different part of the nation is built up in a different way because they all went their separate ways and have this uneasy alliance. And it's like, I love alt history stuff, like alt history sci-fi. Yeah. So, like, I'm a big fan of, like, Man in the High Castle um, and, like, sim- similar ideas like that. Yeah. So this is this is just uh, really, uh, really just hooked me immediately. And then the mystery elements and, like... I mean, one thing that I will mark it, I will mark it down on like the, the characters. So the main character, um, like he's, I don't know, he's a bit one note at the moment because we haven't got his um, full as intention. We just know what he's going for, yeah. but we don't know why. But I can't really fault it too much on that because I feel like it's coming. Like those uh, those early questions are coming. Uh, and you're just introduced to such a uh, a lot of idiosyncratic characters. Like the four horse, well, the three horsemen, uh, they're like, just so interesting in how they have this sort of weird not even postmodern but this weird sort of matter of fact look on their life and their reincarnation and their favorite parts of killing killing people or like being reincarnated and yeah. being kids again and stuff like there's a lot of sort of commentary on that going on at the side as well as like the poetic language like when a, when two characters are talking it's it's just really nice to read like um and like like I said, the accents immediately pop into your head, and it just it has this sort of not musical but this nice rhythm as each character um uh, converses. So yeah, I'm I'm quite quite taken by that. So like yeah, uh, like with uh, Morning Glories, I'm definitely going to read on. I'm definitely going to at least read that second trade. Yeah. and See if it's something that I'm going to invest in further. So for me as well, I mean. I as you as you're aware, Leon. I buy like a huge stack of comics, like every uh-huh. week. <laughs> and like the stack currently, um, <clears throat> it, it it's a lot of Wolverine. Uh, <laughs> obviously, with the new Wolverine movie coming out, Marvel have been um, re-releasing 
uh, number ones of old Wolverine comics and old Wolverine runs. Hmm. Um, and they've done like a kind of like a best of biopic of Wolverine kind of thing, where they've got they've they've released them under this uh, under the banner of uh, True Believers. Okay. They call it they call it the True Believers series, where that's very Marvel. Uh, yeah, at the moment they're just putting out the Wolverine comics, but they're only like um, eighty eight pence each or something like that. Because I mean, well, I've only got the what? American prices. Are you in a time machine? <laughs> yeah, I've only got. Well, yeah, they're, they're at the old prices as well. I've only got the American prices on the comics, so like a dollar. But I think this is like eighty eight pence each when I'm buying them, and um, it starts at. You know, like, you've got Wolverine versus the Incredible Hulk from, like, the very, very early days uh, when he still had whiskers on his mask. Cool. And then it goes just through time forward. It's got, like, the first one of Old Man Logan. You've got the uh, first one where it's X-23 instead of Wolverine. Um, oh, so, so it is just, like, it's yeah. grabbing different, like, ones. Yeah, uh, it's literally just number ones from, from key points past. in the Wolverine timeline, yeah. Okay, that's really And it's, cool. it's pretty sick. I love it. Um, so I've got a huge stack of those uh, that I've been working my way through. Um, uh, just before you move, <coughs> what um, what's your favourite era out of those ones that you got? Oh, I like Wolverine era. I'm I'm a sucker for Weapon X. Oh, okay. I like I like Weapon X and um, I like I like older Wolverine, like uh, sort of seventies X Men Wolverine. Hmm. I like I like. Um, I like Weapon X and I like that kind of you know like the 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 old Wolverine you like the seventies X Men Wolverine stuff as well like the when when Wolverine was you know in the orange and brown and I like those ones and I like I for, yeah I like the Weapon X comics I've always liked the Weapon X comics it's, I've been <clears throat> it, it's just one of those things that you know as a as a teenager I thought it was really rad <laughs> and so, it's just sort like, of stuck with me just just for like say uh... yeah listeners who are not 100 percent on their wolfing history how would you quickly sort of describe the weapon x era or runs um weapon x wolverine is like uh was it late 70s or early 80s i'm lost now <laughs> <laughs> but it is it because this is yeah. the, uh, when you say that, are you talking like is it stuff to do dealing with his his, his origin? It's stuff. It's the stuff that deals with his origin. Yeah. yeah so not yeah. not the Wolverine origins comics as such because they're way later on. But I'm talking about like the ones where he wakes up in the bath with the helmet uh, on yeah. and the stupid metal pants thing, and he's like, "Where am I? Claws! Ah!" Goes running into the woods naked, kind of thing, you know. <laughs> Which I, no. I I always thought was pretty cool. So yeah, and I think that- I think I think that's it's eighties Wolverine, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Like, I've yeah. never um, read Solo Wolverine. Before. You read so much of it, it all blurs into one. But <laughs> like, I've, ne- yeah. I've never read it before, so would yeah, you say so- that's a good place yeah. for me to go in. So Solo Wolverine's cool. Um, it's you know, it's, it's like, like I'm a I'm a big X Men fan, but I've never yeah. read. Uh, I don't think I've read any of the uh, an, an X person's solo book. So mm. I guess it's. It, uh, so, Actually, so uh, tell a lie. I've read I've read one, and it uh, and it was it's a uh, the uh, old, older uh, Wolverine book actually, but I've never read any of the older classic sort of seventies eighties stuff. The you mean the Miller Wolverine, that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where where he goes to Japan? Yeah, because yeah. I've I've always yeah. known of that. Um, yeah. Uh... Oh, actually, I've, I remember reading a couple of issues here and there, mm. but I've never really dived into that one. Yeah. Um, yeah which that... I guess what the, the movie The Wolverine is based on, isn't it? Um, yeah, the second one. Yeah. 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 The, this new one that's up and coming, which is, I guess, why Marvel have been chucking these books out, is all to do with Old Man Logan, I think. Mm. It's like, I think which, it looks like a the, riff. It's the one Wolverine comic I have. Yeah. <laughs> looks like a riff on Old Man Logan, which... Yeah, I, I quite like Old Man Logan. Again, does have a good look to it. Yeah, yeah. Smells like barbecue, reads like bacon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is that kind of book, though, isn't it? It really yeah. is. It's you know, it's <laughs> it's got the trailer. It's got barbecue. It's yeah. Oh, it's it's. That... I've got tetanus just from watching that trailer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think what you can track read in the book. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. Um, it's and like most of the stuff that I've been buying this month has been actually because there's a lot of new. Um, I've been keeping up with my IDW stuff, 
which I've been buying for, well, since last year now, where I got on board with the Revolution event they did, where they crossed over all the different Hasbro properties into one big universe, and they've still been publishing um, the different Hasbro properties with their own comics as well. So they've kind of got this combined universe now, where they all pop up in each other's comics, and they've got one book that brings it all together, and then you've still got the separate lines as well. So you've got, like, G.I. Joe, uh, Mask... Transformers, Micronauts, ROM. My pick of those is currently ROM and Micronauts and the Transformers books. Um, Mask and G.I. Joe are okay. Um, I'm reading them because they fit in with the rest of it, but they're not as good as the other three, I must say. Um, The Transformers book that kind of fits in with everything else, um, I believe, is the Optimus Prime solo title. Hmm. Uh, I think they they keep pulling the Optimus Prime solo title back because he's on Earth now and he's he's trying to be a diplomat basically. He's he's come to Earth and he's trying to get Earth to join the the the, the rest of the universe and you know join and and converse and have a, a you know be part of a forum with these other alien races and stuff like that. And obviously everyone on Earth, being tiny and made of flesh, are really scared because <laughs> it's these giant <laughs> robot people just like lumbering around. They don't know what's going on. They think they they they're kind of looking at it like a hostile takeover, um, and it, it's just you know they're obviously all a bit like do- a bit worried by it. And Optimus Prime's like, oh no no, there's nothing wrong. Don't you know? Believe me when I say there's nothing wrong. And then another spaceship turns up and crashes into the Earth. And it's like, yo, Optimus Prime, we wanna we wanna do a deal with you for something or whatever. And and this is like a new big robotic alien race that poses a threat. And the humans are like well if you weren't here they wouldn't be here so why shouldn't we be worried and it just goes back to square one again type thing <laughs> it's not so, yeah it, it it that it's it's kind of cool it's like it's a bit political it's like politics yeah. it's yeah i quite like it um and um i've also been some picking up some uh of the sort of creator own stuff like the well the image stuff basically that i've been picking up so i've got a few new image comics that i've started reading i've started reading curse words which um i will i'm gonna write up a review about that i think and put that up forward um and that'll be on the blog um i've been reading uh well i just picked up today actually the first book of extremity uh which is a girl who it's it's kind of it's like um it's sci-fi mad max it's mad max flavored ghibli Okay. Yeah, because you've got <laughs> you know like pretty cool. yeah you know you know like the 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 Ghibli stuff where it's Studio Ghibli or Ghibli I never really get quite quite how to say that. I think it's I looked up this because I used to say it wrong all the time and I think yeah. the right way is Ghibli. Ghibli Studio Ghibli. Um, basically, uh, it it's got that Ghibli aesthetic where it's people living in the sky on giant ships and huge castles and on tall hunks of rock and whatever and. So I'm only on book one and, you know, they're all, you know, swords and armor and stuff. And it's post-apocalyptic as well. Uh, And there's these different warring tribes and this young girl's village gets ravaged by these, this, this opposing tribe. And she was like a really good artist. She used to love to draw and they cut off her hand at the beginning of the book. And it's like one big revenge story. Okay. Um, So she's now, you know, she's obviously really angry and just, you know blind hatred kind of thing of these people because they took her art away from her and one of the first pages is her trying to draw with her other hand um and then getting really angry and chucking the book across the room (laughs) um but yeah it's it's deep (laughs) yeah it is it is and it's very very cool uh again i only just got through book one today and i'm already like super hungry for book two and i'd recommend it you know i recommend it It's, it's brilliant uh, other one that I've picked up that started this month was called The Belfry. Uh, okay, that's so a, this, this is yeah. one where you, you've you been pretty hyped for in, in the run-up. I have, yeah. It's a, it's a one-shot horror comic um, by a dude called Gabriel Harbin. Um, and the easiest way to describe it is a dark, ethereal fever dream. <laughs> It is. It Think is in my language. Yeah. So, so it is the nightmare, basically. Like you know, you know when you you have these really, really um, fast-moving 
smoky nightmares. Like, if you ever gone to sleep and had one of those nightmares where you've woken up and you're still feeling the after effects of it, like, three or four minutes afterwards, where you think yeah. it's you think it's happening. Where it's got under your skin. Yeah, yeah, that is what this is. This is your, it, this is your deepest night terror. In comic I mean, form. what's the basic, basic premise without telling me um, anything? Basic premise is plane crash, jungle, um, and n- nasty looking vampire creatures. <laughs> so, and, and it, it moves, it all moves very quickly. It's very close. The artwork is very claustrophobic, very dark. You know, it, it's, it's unclear, but it's intentionally unclear sometimes. It's meant to be like that. It's meant to be smoky. It's meant to be ethereal. It's meant to get under your skin. It's it's playing on the fear of the unknown. So, you know, like you've got in some cinematography, um, in, in some horror movies where they play with shadow hmm. and they play with fear of the dark. Like you've got, you've got someone hears a noise while they're reading and they get up and look down the hallway and the hallway is completely blacked out all the way down, yeah. right? And then when, when terrible things happen to people, when they get picked off and dragged away, the camera moves, it swishes, and, you know, you, you get very sort of short, sharp glimpses of what's doing it. That's that's kind of what this book does. Um, and, it the you know, the, the way the artwork is very fluid, it's, it's painted, it's beautiful. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's this very sort of like dark colour palette and everything, and it's just... Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I loved it. Start to finish. And at the end, you've got like this little blurb about all his influences and stuff like that, which I shan't spoil. I'll let you read it back to front and then tell me what you think. You can get in yeah, touch no, or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Especially but, being a one shot. I mean, yeah. I don't know where you find the time to read all this. Like, oh, man. I just. I'm struggling yeah. to read the two I've read. <laughs> <laughs> I, come, I come home from work and I go up to my. Um, basically, the house I live in, it's a two bedroomed. Uh, terraced house and we've got an attic conversion uh, which um, I have set up as my kind of office I guess mm. with you know inverted commas or whatever yeah um, I went to your last man cave and it was uh, pretty awesome I haven't seen yeah. your, your latest one yet so my yeah uh, my girlfriend's nice enough to let me have this space up in the attic to store all my stuff and you know where I keep all my comics my video games um, and I I come up here and I sit on my beanbag and I read for a bit and that's how I do it. This is, you know, it's my chill out space. I can make a cup of tea and come upstairs and do that. Or I make coffee and do that or whatever, you know. And this is just kind of like my, my chill out space. When I get home from work, I'll come home and I'll just start plow through three or four comics or whatever. And then go back downstairs and, you know, eat, watch TV, whatever. Hmm. Be so social. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just consuming comics, just rattling yeah. through them. Um, but yeah, the, the Belfry is definitely one to get. It's a one shot. Um, so there's no commitment. You just buy it, you read it, you enjoy it, you talk about it, you read it again, you frame it. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's an image one, isn't it? As it well? is, yeah, it's an image book, yeah. Which um, earlier, when uh, when I couldn't remember, I was saying, oh, there's a studio, it might have been Image, or it might have been another one, which all these big... Of course it was Image, because it was, wasn't it, it was McFarlane, Liefeld, uh, Claremont, uh, Jim Lee... They're the ones who all left, uh, like, Marvel and, like, yeah, we're going to create our own studio because you guys are, are holding us back. Um, so, yeah, it's crazy to think that, um, like, uh, and because it feels like nearly every other comic that I see now that seems interesting is Image these days. Yeah, I'm finding that more and more, that I'm, I'm sort of less and less reading the superhero comics and more and more looking for the self-published stuff and the, the the interesting stuff that stands out you know mm. which was my thing with this this four four issue Genny Tartakovsky work I just you know it, it's a Genny Tartakovsky comic and I couldn't pass up the chance to read that because I love Genny you know I like I like Dexter's Lab I like you know, I, I like his cartoons I like Samurai Jack so of course I'm going to read a comic that he's drawn um the um the, another one that I've picked up that uh, started this month was The Old Guard, which is another image comic about a group of, of immortal mercenaries. Um, I've only read book one, and it's basically 
they've been alive through hundreds of battles for hundreds of years and they're just like this these this immortal band of soldiers um and they are hard as nails <laughs> and they they do the dirty work basically they they in the modern day they're mercs for hire kind of thing and you hire you you know you get them to to do dirty work to go to little war torn areas of the world and you know do the things that maybe governments might be embarrassed to do uh but in this in this one they've uh, you know like embarrassed to do publicly anyway like they they in the, in this one there's a hostage situation that they get sent to so they're not entirely bad people they're just you know they all they've known is war and they just do war uh and and they they've been alive for so long that you know it, it feels like to them nothing seems to matter anymore Hmm. Uh, and it, it's it's a cool concept, and I want to see where they take it. I mean, I've always, I've always, I've I've read stories before this concept of the immortal warrior. You know, yeah, he's he's ever present in in you know many battles, and you, you can't kill him. And if you kill him, he just wakes up again on the battlefield. And interestingly enough, uh, a D and D campaign that I've written has a character called Hard. <laughs> uh, old Hod, who is an immortal warrior, mm. um, he's fought through five hundred years worth of battles, and you know he keeps getting killed on the battlefield, and then waking up two days later with a chest full of arrows, just pulling them out and then walking on. He's like one of my NPCs. Okay. Um. So yeah, I mean, pulling this back from the inner nerd back out to the sort of outer nerd circle, it's not so ex- you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of layers yeah um this this book is definitely worth a read the artwork's pretty cool um it's i don't know quite how to describe the art in this because it's uh it's very it's like almost like it, it's the paints are put onto the page without lines and then lines are put on afterwards Okay, so do you get some like overlapping? You don't get any overlapping, no. But it just feels like it's um, feels very liquid. And I've seen, you know, it, I've seen stuff. I've seen a lot of stuff like this before. Mm. Um, and I, you know, it, it, it's something that I've seen a lot of in older comics. Uh, and I really, I really, really do like it. Um, the artist on this is Leandro Fernandez. Um, and he has worked on Punisher Max, Deadpool. Um, and um, the writer uh, has actually won an Eisner Award. Oh, Greg nice. Rooker, yeah. He's the, he oh, did, Rooker. Yeah, yeah Rooker. Yeah. Greg Rooker, yeah. He's his Lazarus Black Magic Wonder Woman. So yeah, it's um it's a cool book and it's worth a read and the first one's out, so go pick it up. Yeah, go. Cool. Yeah. Sounds um, good. And yeah, so that's that's been my reading this month. Uh that's the stack. <laughs> the stack, <laughs> yeah. The stack. <laughs> yeah. Oh and all, all Star Batman, which I'm continuing to follow as well, which gets an honourable <laughs> mention because it's the bat. <laughs> but yeah. Um so I think Rahul sent us a question, didn't he? Oh, all the way from uh, the all land of the all the way from sun. Japan. Yes, the land of the yeah. rising sun. And this question is something that I've been wrestling with. That I've been having such difficulty trying to find a, a decent answer for. So I'm going to let Leon go first and then try and take inspiration. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, from Rahul, what would be your favourite fictional travel destination from a comic, and what souvenir would you bring back to your pals at Ace Comicals? Hmm. Well, yeah, I found this one to be tough. Um... But I think I settled on on mine, and I, I think there could be a disparity between like the destination and what I would collect from there. But um, I think like my runner-up one um, would be uh, you know the world of the boys, yeah. which is, yeah. is basically just normal America, but there's superheroes about. Right. Yeah. But, uh, the key for going there is one. To live in a world with the superheroes about would be kind of cool uh, for five minutes until you realise what a pain they are. Yeah. 
but it, I think Compound V, I'd bring you guys back some Compound V and we can get juiced up and be superheroes <laughs> for a weekend. <laughs> I think it'd be ace. See, um, like, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, yeah. I was just going to say, like, um, I think that would be, um, that'd be a fun one, but, um, yeah. Yeah, the destination itself it isn't that isn't that funny. Um, uh, funny isn't that uh, interesting? Um, I had a, I had a joke one, which is the first one that popped into my head when I couldn't think of the um, an answer, and that was um, the world uh, of uh, sex criminals. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I don't know how I'd bring this back though, but I'd bring back the power that they have to freeze time uh, during the <laughs> refractory period, but. Uh, no, no, my my honest honest answer and like the location, um, I think the location is super interesting. Even though like it's it's set in a normal in the normal world, pretty much apart from the fact that um, there's like magic. Uh, so like my uh, the the place I would head to would be the uh, the lock house, the the house from Lock and Key. Oh. Yeah, key house. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the the family locks uh, key house uh, yeah. from lock and key. Yeah. And one as a place, I just think that, that uh, without going into any super specifics from the comic book, um, the place itself is just so interesting. You got all these cool rooms, uh, these cool little passageways, uh, these cool uh, hidden areas, and like the way the art's done in the book, uh, it really does feel mm. like a real location. Um, but yeah, the uh, part of lock and key is the fact that the, uh, there are these magical keys about that, uh, do different magical things when you use them, uh, in a particular place or in a particular situation. And there's so many cool keys. I mean, there's ones that we get during the main storyline. There's ones that are alluded to, but one of the earlier keys that are, uh, that is mentioned would be the one that I would pick. Um, and that is the head key. I put the head key so I could uh, unlock my brain, you know, like put it in the back of my head, turn the, fl- flip the key, <laughs> and then the thing that's great about that, I wouldn't take anything out because uh, I think that's dangerous. Yeah, but um, I would definitely put more in. I mean, imagine being able to learn something instantly. That like one of my favorite bits in the Matrix is I know kung fu. Like yeah. just to, someone to press a button, and do that. I'd love to be able to uh, understand mm. something. So a lot of the time, I read like. Uh, what I can understand of like yeah. different uh, like science journals, especially yeah. to do with like um, like astrophysics <clears throat> and, and space science, I find that stuff to be really interesting. But there's a limit where my understanding just starts to hit a wall, and I'd love to be able just to yeah feed in feed in a Carl Sagan book, uh, feed, feed in some. Uh, some uh, professor but, uh, and someone working at NASA but, feed, um, feed in their information. Not not to spoil the book too much, but putting it in there isn't necessarily comprehension. Yeah, which is true. Yeah, but I mean, um, I I think uh, popping that stuff in so I got it to recall at, at the very <laughs> at the very least. Well, I got it to check out later. Would be um, I think that'd be an interesting um, interesting thing to bring back. And I mean, I'm bringing it back for. Yeah. For you guys, we all get to like mess around with the head key. Okay, so my you well, I w- one of the ones I was gonna go for was lock and key, but um, I think I changed that now. So the, I had again, I had a few answers kicking around in my head. There was going to Marvel's um, Marvel's version of America and bringing back some super super soldier serum. Oh yes, uh, and juicing us all up with super soldier serum, which would have been. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's permanent that one as well Compound yeah, feet, like yeah. temporary exactly yeah. supply <laughs> <laughs> permanent super soldier serum is like one injection and we're like we're Steve Rogers yeah all of us um, and uh, well one of my other ones would be which is also permanent but you've got to think about like the trade off so how ugly it makes you versus how badass it makes you like if I went to the TMNT New York and brought back some mutagen from <laughs> Krang's hideout, from from the Utron, from from I mean, Shredder what, are himself. You combining with an animal. Well, yeah. What do you reckon? Like, what animal? Would you would you would you be up for what animal would you go for? I mean, I, I'd probably. Uh, uh, I don't know. What would uh, I pick? 
tough. I'd probably go with like some sort of bird. I think. Yeah. I'd to fly. I'd I'd pick something gnarly like a gator. <laughs> I think I'd go to the zoo and just like. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, it would either be a bird, or if somehow you combine this with something else and yeah. they're able to get their hands on some uh, dinosaur DNA, I'd be like a pterodactyl or something. Yeah, something something badass like that. <laughs> I mean, there is there is retro mutagen in the new 2012 cartoon, Donnie Engineers a Way to Turn People Back. But, okay. um, yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, I, I, think, I think I'd bring back some mutagen. I might bring back some pizza as well. Well, you got to. Yeah. I might even bring what? Mikey back. No, I think it'd be too lit for us. You think Mikey'd be too lit? Yeah, I'd love to party yeah. with Mikey. I think it'd be great, <laughs> but I think it'd be better to like do there and, and then and leave. Yeah. Because I think I don't think the real world is ready for... Uh, for Michelangelo. Michelangelo. <laughs> you think he's too lit for the real world? <laughs> um, well, yeah, yeah. I think he's... Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's too much. He'd be skating around. Yeah. With his, with his, like, his, you know. He's a party dude, remember? Didn't yeah, song? yeah, party yeah. Dude. He's, that, is his, that is his raison d'etre. But he can, he can chill. He can yeah. chill. Uh, you know, he plays, he sits and plays video games with, like, um, you know, with, with the mute animals and he, he chills and eats pizza. You he's know. got sweet, sweet nunchucks. Yeah. And he's just just an all round bro, you know. Yeah, he's got he's got to be fairly disciplined if he can handle non trucks. To be honest, well, duh, Master Splinter's his dad, so yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, they're very dangerous weapons to have. Yeah, like, if you, like he's a he's a party dude, but he's probably like uh, I don't know. It's like uh, it's party in the sheets, but he's like uh, he's a, he's a pro on the streets type thing. Like, oh, he's a pro ninja on the streets. He, yeah, he, yeah he, he he's bringing it. He he, yeah. he gets work done yeah. before before it's um, playtime. So yeah, TMNT New York, bring back mutagen pizza. Um, I'd go to obviously not at the same time because that would be that would turn you into a horrific mess. Um, I would one of the other answers I was going to give is that I might go to Gotham. Of course you would. Yeah. Just you, of course you would. <laughs> I just go to Gotham just to you know just to experience it. I mean, yeah, it's like proper dangerous. <laughs> yeah, Gotham sounds like the, the, the stereotype of Chicago, New York, and LA on drugs. All the all the all the worst parts of those three places lumped together in one city. Why not come and visit Gotham? Book your stay. What would you bring back? What would I bring back? Um, Risking your life. What would you bring him back? What would I be bringing him back? Hopefully, you know my skin. Uh, <laughs> I think I'd um, I'd do a little bit of a tour of the city. I might, you know, I might go to Commissioner Gordon, uh, get some G, get some GCPD, get some GCPD junk, some pens and stuff. You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I might swing by Wayne Tower, get some Wayne Tower junk, pens, badges, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to be honest, as as we joke, uh, yeah. it would actually be cool. Yeah, I'd I'd probably I'd probably go to um I'd probably go to the pier, yeah. to, the, to the abandoned uh, to the abandoned fairgrounds, you know, maybe maybe pick up uh, some of those snapping wind up Joker teeth <laughs> and a case of tetanus. Um, I'd probably I won't go in the sewers. I won't go in the sewers. Uh, You'd have to go to the gates of Arkham. Oh, obviously go to the gates of Arkham and have a selfie. Get a selfie there. Yeah, yeah. Get a selfie at the gates of Arkham. (laughs) Um, Maybe, like, I don't know, maybe I'd find a way to befriend some of the Bat family. Like, might catch Robin one day. Get him to get him to get him to give me a batarang or something cool like that. Some Wayne Tech, you know? That would be, yeah, if you you brought (laughs) back a batarang, that would be pretty awesome. The thing is, knowing me, I'd bring back a batarang and I'd just like cut myself on it instantly and <laughs> horrifically. Like I'd just slice my hand open. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd 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 go for that kind of stuff. I'd just do like a proper tour of Gotham and hopefully not get killed. <laughs> so what what's your what's your main one? What's your, what's your proper one? Main one, uh mutagen TMNT. Uh, Mute, okay. Mutagen and pizza, yeah. So you're sticking with the risky radioactive poison. Risky radioactive poison, yeah. And Party time with Michelangelo. Maybe <laughs> well, that's worth it. That yeah, is worth it. Yeah, maybe maybe I could join the mute animals. Also, um, I don't know if no, because the DC world doesn't count as the real world, does it? 
I was yeah. going to say in the in the Turtles Batman crossover, um, when the turtles appear in Batman's Gotham, the mutagen deteriorates and wears off after a while, which is dangerous for the turtles because it would turn them back into ordinary house house variety turtles, garden variety turtles, whatever. But they do Joker does they do, do well not they do the Joker does a deal with the Shredder and he gets mutagen and uses it on the uh, the whole of Batman's Road Gallery. And but after a while it wears off again, obviously, because mm. mutagen deteriorates in Gotham in that world. So I, I don't know if, if if that rings true, and if I could, you know, momentarily transform myself into a badass crocodile man or something. I don't know, but yeah. <clears throat> no, yeah, I'd I'd go I'd go there. So, I guess that wraps it up. Mm. Yeah, um, you can find us on Facebook at Ace Comicals. You can find us on Twitter at Ace Comicals. You can find us on our website, www.acecomicals.com. You can find us on iTunes under Ace Comicals. You can find us on Pocket Casts. You can find our blog at acecomicals.wordpress.com. You can find... You can find us in a plethora of places. You can contact We're us everywhere. At, yeah, you can contact us at acecomicals at gmail.com. Or you can contact me directly, Greg, at at Bato on Twitter. If you have any questions for us, um, Leon, where can we find you? Uh, I'm uh, at Leon Everett on Twitter. Find me there. And if you want to get, obviously, you can get a hold of Leon through the Ace Comicals channels as well. Um, that's been Ace Comicals. Thanks for listening. Uh, Ace Comicals over and out. Bye.